The last week has been an absolute whirlwind for the world of not only security, but open source in general. If you're not aware of what happened, a backdoor had been put in the XZ project. In particular, a backdoor was put in libLZMA. We've had a couple of days to figure out what's going on here, and luckily some researchers from around the community figured out exactly what this backdoor does. In this video, we're gonna break down how the backdoor behaves, what it looks like over the wire, and what the attacker meant to do with it. Also, hi. I'm low level learning. I make videos about programming, software security. So if you like that or just want to hang out with me, hit that sub button, really appreciate it. Full disclosure, I did not write the code in this video. I did not do the reverse engineering. I'm a dad, I'm very busy, but luckily other people in the community had the time to take care of this and do it. So I'm going to link all of their work and the repos in the description below. Please go check out their stuff, go follow them on Twitter, go like and subscribe to their content. Uh, but in this video, we're gonna break down how XZBot works. XZBot being a way to interact with the backdoor using some reverse engineering strategies that a researcher at Google used. Let's get into it right now. Now, if you wanna follow along with me, it's actually really easy to do so. The, the author of the XZBot repo actually gave a great write-up on how to set up an environment that allows you to use OpenSSH in the way that would depend on the back door. I am in a sandboxed environment. You're looking at an Ubuntu 2204 virtual machine, and I'm doing this in a way that I am protecting myself against any additional features that may not have been found in the back door. Like maybe, for example, it calls home to some C2 server. I don't want that to happen in my home network, right? So this has been completely isolated in a way that I'm not worried about that. The way this backdoor works is absolutely insane. And the way they implemented their C2 with this backdoor would have never been caught without severe auditing of the process. And again, thank God that the researcher at Microsoft found this thing. So the way that it works is the backdoor has to be triggered with a specific set of data in the key exchange of the SSH connection. The backdoor can be triggered by connecting with an SSH certificate with a payload in the CA, Certificate Authority Signing Key End Values. This payload must be encrypted and signed with the attacker's ED448 key. That's an elliptic curve cryptography 448 is the key space key. The way this works is basically when you do a certificate exchange with the server that has been infected by the backdoor, what the backdoor will actually do is check has that certificate been signed by the attacker, right? And if you don't know what signing means, when you sign something, you have two keys. You have a private key and a public key. In a signing scheme, the public key is the key used to decrypt and the private key is the key used to encrypt. So E is private, D is public. Now, when you want to sign something, what you're actually doing is using the private key to encrypt a hash of it. And then when you want to verify the signature, you decrypt the hash and you say, okay, cool. After I've decrypted the thing, the hash matches the hash of the data. Therefore, only the person who was able to sign this could have created this data. So what they're doing is they're hiding their command to control the command they want to run on the backdoor server in the certificate authorities signing key end value. So this is absolutely wild because when you're doing a cryptographic key exchange over the wire, it's just a blob of data. Just like how they hid the backdoor in an LZMA stream, they're also hiding the C2 over data that is normally not otherwise inspected. People kind of just accept that like, okay, an SSH exchange is gonna have some binary data, we're not gonna touch it. So they have these three bytes here and basically the algorithm command one times two plus three has to equal three. And if it doesn't, the backdoor or keeps processing, otherwise it'll take that, check the signing value and then move forward. Then inside of the certificate authority end value that has been signed, if these three values equal three, it'll have a ciphertext. The backdoor will then decrypt the ciphertext with this known symmetric key. We have two kind of key schemes going on here. We have the signing scheme that says this payload came from the evil person, and then the ciphertext is just to hide it, right? So we have to decrypt it and find out, okay, cool, now we know what the, the payload is. So within the ciphertext, once it's been decrypted, we have the signature of the ciphertext, the command to run, and then some kind of padding to make it all the right size to be able to do the encryption. So basically, Basically, inside the back door, there is this evil key, 0A31FD, blah, 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 blah. And this is the public key of the attacker. Now, in theory, the attacker has the associated private key. If they were able to sign a payload and send it to an infected server, it would decrypt it as we just described and run the payload. Now, because we don't have the attacker's private key, unless you do, 
if you do turn yourself in, but no one really does, right? So what we have to do to prove the backdoor works is we have to replace the public key with a known public key that we have the associated private key for. So the author of this repo took the public key out of the project and replaced it with this public key. And then in the script to test the backdoor has the known private key. They made a little script called python3 patch.py where you give it an infected libLZMA file, it'll find the function that does the backdooring and it'll in place replace the bad key with the good key, or I guess the, the, the attacker's key with your key. And this is actually a really good way of testing if you have a vulnerable version, right? Basically, if you find that you have this string in your LZMA file, you have the public key in your binary, you are infected, get rid of it. So to get my server set up, basically I have SSHD running as a systemd service. The reason that this matters is because SSH by default does not depend on LZMA without running as a systemd service. And the way we can check this is we can do LDD on user sbin SSHD. By doing this, it'll expose all of the shared objects that the binary depends on, right? We can see right here that because it's compiled in a way that depends on systemd messaging, it is compiled with lib LZMA. And then this lib LZMA, if we do a ls tacl on the file, we can see that this is a symlink to the version that I compiled to test the backdoor, which is lib LZMA 560. Now, how do we make this meaningful, right? Again, we want to test the backdoor, but we don't have the private key to do the evil bidding. So here what I'm doing is I'm taking the patch file that they wrote and I'm pointing it at the backdoor LZMA library that I compiled locally on my computer. And what it does is it finds the function that has the backdoor in it and it produces a dot patch version of shared objects that has a public key that we know the private key for. And so we can just copy this to our systems libraries, right? And now when we go to run SSHD, it will depend on the malicious version that has our known public key. Backdoor is still having the same functionality. It's just, it has a public key that we actually know the value for. And this is where it gets really crazy. So we can use XZBot and what it does is it uses that structure of take the command, encrypt it, put those three magic values, and then sign that with the private key, and it sends it to the SSH server. We can do XZBot tack H to get the help menu, right? And so we're gonna do the adder of my local server, which is 127001. Don't leak my IP address, please. Uh, and port 22, right? So this is it showing us the key exchange that's happening. And again, what's so scary about this is if you were to observe this over the wire, you would not think anything bad about the nature of this data. This is just an RSA key exchange. Like why would there be anything evil here? And so what they did is they took that data that people normally trust and they use that as a place to hide their payload. So what we can do now is we can use this to run evil commands and the nature of the evil commands is even scarier. So let's do tack H again to kind of show the string here. We'll do command and I want to run ID which shows you what privilege level you are on the system and I'm going to output it to temp for the video. Now we did that, you know, nothing crazy happened on the system. It just kind of ran quietly. But if I cat temp for the video, you'll see that the output of ID was root. This is where things get even crazier. And I think everyone kind of knew this, but you have to really put your wrap your head around the magnitude of this bug. If the attacker had not got caught, they would have had a backdoor in the process of libzma that when compiled on servers would be depended on by SSHD. Then when able to execute the backdoor via a C2 channel that is encrypted and mostly obfuscated and not really questioned, they get arbitrary command execution, not as some user on the system, but as root. And why is that? Because SSHD runs as root. It has to run as root to then de-escalate your privileges to the user that you log in as absolutely terrifying. Now, while this bug is super scary and kind of highlights the nature of the vulnerabilities of open source software, what I do like about what's happened is it's getting people to think. It's a, basically the entire community has woken up and now realizes, oh, there's a problem and it's no longer this like quiet thing that people in, you know, conspiratorial corners where we're talking about. So anyway, get your thinking caps on, think of cool solutions of how we can pre prevent this from happening in other repos. And then if you were totally lost about what's going on, go check out this video. See you guys there. Take care.